All right, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Vicky3 Academy. I'm Walker, and we're discussing a Mexico uh, basic country guide right now. So I did a, a little playthrough myself of Mexico off, off stream just to, like, see what, yeah, just to kick the tires and, and see what, what's going on under the hood here with our with, with Mexico. So there are a couple of really important things that if you've played Mexico before, you're probably already aware of. First of all, of course, you, you do start in this war with, with Texas. So just like, don't mess around with it. Just go ahead and mobilize everybody and activate all your conscription centers. It really doesn't cost you much to do this. Um, and it, it can save you some serious headaches. And then you just like go ahead and let this guy build up, let let Santa Ana build up, and then just conquer Texas. If you if you want to to hold it for a while, you can send Juan Alvarez in front, and then follow up by by sending um, Santa Ana in behind. Whoever whoever you end up with more uh, with more victories with will end up with more popularity, which is like a little important when it comes to their their political strength. We could even we could even do this, send them both at once. It doesn't really matter. Because the broad thing that you're doing with Mexico, Mexico, of course, is you're trying to resist the United States. That's like, this is this is largely going to be your main antagonist throughout like the probably the first couple of decades is fighting the United States, depending on on how quickly you can cut them apart. Um, so that means that you need to find friends. So as the as as Mexico, my recommendation is to make sure that Great Britain and France are as as friendly as possible. Um, and then once you've secured that. Then you go ahead and you finish up your fight with Texas. And then as Central America disintegrates, I would strongly encourage you to push south. Because if you can push south, depending on, on how um, angry you are getting Great Britain and France, you may need to puppet instead of direct conquer and then just do a puppet annex. That's very, very strong. But if you can do that and you can push your way south... A, you'll find really great resources like iron mines, but B, if you can conquer all the way down to Costa Rica, you can you can really get crazy with the cheese whiz and just like go all over South America. Because keep in mind that a lot of these are going to be the same cultural group as you, European heritage and Hispanophone, um, and so you can you can do a lot of really great stuff in terms of of expanding your population base. That's the biggest weakness, I think, of Mexico right now. Um, it's not necessarily that the United States is guaranteed to kill you. It's just that, like, you, you really don't have a lot of pops, and so you need to fix that. Um, fortunately, Mexico starts in a really, a really liberal set of laws right now. Um, so the one thing that's kind of like holding you back in terms of getting infinite population is migration controls. So if you can get out of migration controls, which is going to require the industrialists to be powerful most of the time, um, then like really the world is your oyster. Because look at, you don't have slavery or serfdom. Both of those are gone. You don't have hereditary bureaucrats. You even start in cultural exclusion. That's really, really liberal when it comes to your, your law and stuff. You have a, a presidential republic. You're an oligarchy, which is not very good, but fortunately it's outrageously unpopular, and so it's easy to get out of olig oligarchy and into something else. Um, I think that, generally speaking, I'm going to recommend people go into landed voting, um, just because it's going to be a little harder to get the strength for um, wealth voting together without without causing problems, because armed forces are going to usually be a big part of your, your government here, and because this is a, a set moderate, uh, it's going to be hard to get wealth voting passed, but it's very easy to get landed voting passed. And that's going to dramatically increase your ability to, to have legitimacy and then get laws done. Um, so you're probably going to end up working with the intelligentsia, maybe the rural folk. Um, but as, as, as Mexico, because you start with um, serfdom abolished and slavery banned and a lot of aristocrats running around, guess what that means? That means that you have a strong landowner. If you can get the landowner to be even stronger... Like, for instance, if you use landed voting to give aristocrats extra political votes, um, then you can get yourself up into corn laws. And once you're up into corn laws, you can you can use that to change your leader in the landowner from a jingoist or or whatever they happen to be um, into a a free trader, which can be very, very helpful for you as as Mexico, because if they are like, you know, jingoist, usually it's like, oh, yeah, that's really helpful because you get to switch out of peasant levies. No, you 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 start out of peasant levies. Look again, look at your laws like the best thing that you can change at the beginning of the game is probably per capita taxation, but, like, you, you do need to get out of agrarianism and mercantilism, but, like, by and large, these laws are pretty good for 1836, so keep 
keep the keep the pressure going in that in that front. Um, once you get over to a free trader and you can use corn laws and switch over to laissez-faire and, and free trade, that, that's just going to make you have an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly happy landowner for kind of no cost. Um, you don't have a lot of things that you need to change here, but by making an incredibly happy landowner, you are going to be able to get down into sense of suffrage a lot easier from from landed voting um because they won't they won't start a, a revolution or anything like that but but mexico i think i think honestly once you get out of migration controls uh as long as you build stuff in your country which is kind of the other the other big factor when it comes to mexico um you your economy does starts pretty small it starts pretty small and so you do need to do a lot of work to get it up and going um you need to build some construction sectors you need to build some iron mines you need to build the, probably this gold mine because that's also going to be helpful but you also need to be aware of the the state modifiers um you have a state modifier in your capital you have a state modifier in one of the other really high population density um uh, states so unfortunately when it comes to playing as as mexico your best bet is to build in like bahio or yucatan um that's like where you're going to be building more, most efficiently at the beginning of the game or of course texas um but like a lot of your your core is going to have this 10 percent construction efficiency penalty on it and a 10 percent in infrastructure penalty on it that doesn't mean that you cannot build there you absolutely can build there but you need to be careful about building there because your economy is really small and you need to get um the biggest bang for your buck that you can get and the easiest way to ensure that of course is to to build where your construction sectors are are not going to get choked um so just just be careful just be careful on that front you also of course you have you start at least in 1.0.6 with just like way too many trade routes you can cancel some of this crap like you don't need to be intentionally and specifically exporting sugar you can just use uh your tariffs to do that for you right like if you just have tons and tons and tons of sugar like just just go in here set it to encourage exports and then bam you're not spending bureaucracy that you don't have on selling sugar um you instead can just encourage people to come buy it from you same with like you can use this to buy luxury clothes and that's that does generate a little bit of tariff money for you and it also helps increase the standard of living for the the rich pops but like you're buying luxury clothes i don't think so i would i would encourage most people to go through and just clean up these trade routes before unpausing because some of these are just crap um that the dyes i think you can just go ahead and slap extra export costs on make sure that you just clean up your tariffs as as basically everyone but especially as mexico because you start with you 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 need the bureaucracy you need the bureaucracy you cannot afford to be wasting it on on nonsense um and then of course if you really want to you can colonize down here um there's there's no reason that you can't do that but you do need to be aware that your population is not infinity um and so the more that you spread out your your colonization the slower it's gonna go so just just be ready for that be ready for for that cost colonial exploitation is n is neat um but it's it's pretty slow at level one and you don't have the bureaucracy to afford anything higher than that when it comes to fighting the united states of america i would i would strongly encourage people like i when i was when i was playing um last time and just like mulching through the central american states i think it was when i got to either nicaragua or honduras it must have been nicaragua uh, the united states intervened but like that doesn't matter if the united states is fighting you as mexico and you're fighting nicaragua do you know how you can win that war well you can win that war by capitulating nicaragua and not assigning any extra war goals against the United States that you're not going to be able to to prosecute. Like just when when you are punching up like that, be very careful about demanding things from them that you are not going to be able to secure. If you don't have a fleet, which I I did not have time to build a fleet before I fought the United States, um, then then like just don't demand war reparations and stuff. Like I just capitulated uh, Nicaragua. And then I had a war against the United States where they had been pulled in via an obligation. 
they didn't have any wargles that they could that they could execute against me so i was able to just capitulate and then that was cool and and i didn't really have to fight the united the united states for that long um i would look however to to capitalize like so 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 hard in the event that you can get the United States to have a civil war or anything like that, because you do want to blow them apart. They, if you, if these guys are able to just like grow in peace indefinitely, they can become a, a major problem for you. Um, so that's why, is Mexico? I think I think your basic goal is just get in, get into migration controls. That's going to be hard because you do not start industrialized, so you don't bring the industrialists in at two point four percent. You build them up. Um, and in order to build them up, you're going to need to do stuff like switch into laissez-faire off of corn laws. You're going to need probably to switch into landed voting and then wealth voting, maybe even census suffrage to distribute power a little better. Um, and then maybe you'll pick up dedicated police force. You'll certainly want to pick up per capita taxation. Uh, but some of, some of these changes are going to be incredibly easy for you because you are going to be able to have a lot of legitimacy for a long time. Because you're going to have armed forces kind of just like hanging around, giving you pretty cool uh, support for distribution of power. Because they do have a special, a special distribution of power, um, a, a, a special, a special ideology here. Because they are the special armed forces, right? We have local police force supported um, over dedicated police force. That's not great, but you can get around that. We've got appointed bureaucrats, uh, landed voting. They, they are going to be in favor of landed voting or autocracy more than anything else. So you, you're, it might be hard to get past landed voting in terms of liberalizing, but you can figure it out. The armed forces don't have to be powerful forever unless you want them to be. All right. Um, so that's a basic, basic country guide for Mexico. I think that ultimately if you prioritize constructing things like um, tools and iron mines, you're going you're gonna to be able to grow your economy really, really quickly. And once you start growing your economy really quickly by just doing construction, you know, like keep in mind, like once you start building your your peasants away and your standard of living pops up, and and be, even if you can't get out of migration controls, you have cultural exclusion and state religion. So it just means that like Catholics are gonna fleet are gonna flood into your country. Um, on that note, it might be worth it to switch into freedom of conscience for the same reason because you do want to get as much migration as possible as Mexico. Okay. Uh, that's Walker, and that's a basic Mexico guide here on We Play Games. All right, uh, take care.